In the last video, we did an experiment to see if the worst quarterback recruit could eventually get drafted if he had some help. The team of choice in that was, of course, New Mexico, being the lowest overall in the game. And typically, it's Army or Navy that are the worst team in the game, particularly Navy, though. In fact, for a very long time, Navy was the worst team in the game at 68 overall. So obviously, when I learned that New Mexico was now the worst team in the game by overall, I knew I just had to do a rebuild with them. And the thing is, they're in the Mountain West as well, which by no means is an easy conference. You got some big hitters like Fresno, Boise State, Air Force. And then, of course, you have Wyoming that is sitting at 70 overall. If I were to do another rebuild after this, it would more than likely be Wyoming. So let me know down in the comment section if you'd like to see that. But every time we get a major roster update, I feel like it is my duty as an American, technically speaking, I'm not lying, I do have American citizenship, to rebuild the worst team in the game. So let's go, fellas. So we know what the team is looking like because we did the experiment. I know about Miles Kendrick. He's a senior. He's got to get out of here. The running backs are 69 overall at best. Receivers are 73 at best, which is just not very good. Tight end is 68. I'm pretty sure the O-line was pretty much all high 60s, which is true. And strong safety was actually our strongest part. Dari Holsey, this guy is a machine. Now, unfortunately, he won't be there for the final year, but he will be close to it. Since I plan on getting fired this year anyway we might as well go and uh and redshirt him we will try and sign some players that are generally interested but not gonna get us very far <laughs> we know that from the experiment already i've got three people on the board it's not looking too flash hot here jonathan baker gonna go up to a 71 these of course are the best players in the nation i'm already seeing a handful of quarterbacks maybe we can get one of these quarterbacks i mean that'd be a great start all right we're starting out with a win wow so in an incredible turn of events kenny edwards the number one ranked ranked player in the nation, who's also on a pipeline, is genuinely interested. We have the lead on him. Can't go wrong with that. The best receiver in the class, the number one ranked player. Runs a 4-3-4. Now let's see what else we have. Get our defensive ends out the way, straight out the gate. Wow, that is a really good squad. It's been a minute since I've seen somebody like that. Joshua Hammond, looking like the real freaking deal right now. This will be another interesting one. 58 overall, but he's got a 640 squad, so we should see that go up quite a bit. Ricky Watson gonna go up plus eight overall. We got ourselves Tyrell Wilcox here. He's not great. Then again, we have James Wright though. This guy is a quarterback. 91 carrying, 92 speed, 88 excel. So, so far so good. This is what the class is looking like. Really happy with it. Could not ask for much more to start out. Question is, can we get a big boy win over UNLV? If we can get that, we might be able to sign some of these guys and move on. See, that's what I'm talking about. How did we get blown? Are we really that bad? Like, there's bad and there's dog shit and i think we might be dog shit every player every low lock cheese player has massive drop-offs from other teams i would like to take some of the points off and at least delegate them elsewhere but it is probably in our best interest just to keep the 700 on i'd rather guarantee these signings now and then move on down the list the first class that we go after is always the most important class that's why i emphasize quarterback because they're going to get the most opportunity to grow before that final push jonathan baker gets taken over by Tulsa that's the second player that Tulsa has stolen from me we're dropping down a lot on a lot of players I would like to get Estes because he would be like a 99 safety it looks like the wide receivers and the D linemen are in the bag we could potentially sign Estes we just have a really bad bonus but if we're gonna get in this battle we have to do it now I would be really excited to do a Wyoming rebuild too I don't know I always just kind of felt sorry for the program not because of any reason just because they're yellow and brown yellow and brown wouldn't be my first two color combos you know what I mean Greater logic, I guess. Beautiful. So there goes Kenny Edwards, the number one guy in the nation. We get ourselves an O-lineman. And we get James Wright, who is our quarterback. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to get Estes. I think it was just a, a case of too little too late. Remember, though, we do still have the rule in effect when it comes to low-look cheese. We're allowed to go after low-look cheese, but it's only allowed to be added in week three. So hypothetically, I wouldn't be able to go in and add more players to the board now. That is against the rule. There goes the entire D-line. Not going to lie, this might be looking like a number one class in the nation. Just putting it out there. Yo, Fresno was ranked three. They were 81 overall. That's what I mean, though. The Mountain West is not that bad. Dylan McKinney, DJ Campbell, and James Gillespie are all signing with us. Not too excited about the ULM transfer, but 81 
at right guard. Freshman as well. Okay, we got the both of them. And that's going to be a top 25 class. Obviously, the top class in conference. I don't think anybody doubted that. So 15th, not bad at all. One five star, seven four stars. It didn't seem that overpowered. It didn't seem that broken. So this will give us a much better understanding. We didn't really get that many players overall. Wide receiver, we got a DT. I know the D line is essentially done, but one. Alrighty, so let's see what we're working with. Again, I think it's going to be the same story of we don't have a lot of good players interested. Okay, the one player I put on that was interested went down. Straight up bust, my guy. So I don't expect any of these players to uh, sign with us. I just really want to get us a running back. Do I even bother going after Freddie Williams? We don't even have a good bonus. No. This guy's from Texas. That's another pipeline. One thing that's kind of crazy about New Mexico is California and Texas are a pipeline. I don't actually know where on the map New Mexico is. I know it's down south. Southwest? you know? But that's pretty much the extent of my New Mexico knowledge. If you could just get New Mexico to say a four-star prestige, I reckon the team would pretty much build itself. Wait, how we want to know? We're C's across the board, so we, who did we be? Oklahoma State. They started off zero and two. You've got to be jarking. All right, it was worth a crack, but we are back to square one, and I don't even think we can get these two. But it is low lock cheese. This is the only week we can add said low lock cheese. Straight away, I need a running back. I have to get multiple running backs five-star quarterback, but I just don't really need it, man. You know what I mean? We might've got a lucky break with Sean Moss. He's a Juco sophomore, so by the time we sign him, the first class players will be freshman red shirts, but if we red shirt Sean Moss, then he would be a red shirt sophomore with everybody else, right? I'm not tripping, that's the math right there. Okay, so I think we've found more than enough uh, running backs to make this work. Just some cheeky O linemen to go with it. There goes another running back, Kevin Matthews. Now this guy is a beast. 80 break tackle, 81 carrying. Really good speed to start off too. Jesse Durbin gonna go up. And we got Marlon Thomas going up too. All right, I think I'm gonna need these O linemen right here. We didn't add a singular linebacker on. It doesn't really matter if they're not not the best at this point we just need linebackers i'll take what i can get because if we go after them next year it might be too little too late so these are the linebackers 69 68 and 68 so the quicker we can sign them get these bums out the way the better apparently we need wide receivers we need a running back we need linebackers which is fine we're going after that we need running back we need a punter all right computer i'm working on it mate all right again it's looking like an overwhelming lead the linebackers are even good Oh, you know what else? I didn't get cornerbacks and I didn't get safeties. You just can't get one without the other. There's there's always something that you're going to miss out on. Maybe some of these athletes could be cornerbacks. That's like our only saving grace. So Antoine Smith is actually a corner. The thing is, I think it's way too far gone. Adam Bishop is the only corner that we have. All right. Well, at least, at least we have one. There's our first win over Boise. We brought everybody in that week as well for a visit. Woo! Okay, I was not expecting that. There goes all three linebackers, a right guard, and two wide receivers, one of them being 81 overall. And we're five and three. Okay, this is OD. I have to look at the roster. So we were a coach of the year finalist, interestingly enough. We're actually going to unlock three out of three insta commit here too. Pipeline's up to three out of three. We can even break back in. Oh, this is too good to be true. So do you remember in the experiment why we went zero and 12 in year two? It's because we started JB Carpenter and he was 40 overall. With an 82 quarterback, this team genuinely mustn't be too bad because we've strung together a hell of a lot of wins. It must be the playbook again because Montez led the nation. He had 5,400 yards, 42 touchdowns, and 15 picks as an 83 overall. And it's not like he had the world to work with here too. Please, no transfers. Okay, we have one. It's James Wright. No way. That is without a doubt absolutely worst case scenario right there the player cannot be persuaded there's no way bro this is why i say no matter what always have a backup that's why sometimes i'll go and randomly sign an extra quarterback or something like that because of moments like this we have 273 percent locks here that might be good i don't know i don't know even know if they're quarterbacks damian young goes up to 75 and he is a quarterback oh man i'm gonna have to pull the trigger on damian young i have no choice here and adam bishop we're just gonna have to hope that we can sign him even though i already know that we can't so we did get nick davis we do not get adam bishop or sean moss 
It is going to be another top 25 class. We do have three out of three insta commit to. 22nd best class up to a two star. I was even so scared of him leaving that I cut all the other better quarterbacks than him. He knew when he made that decision that he was going to start this upcoming year and still left. And I have a feeling that that offensive lineman that transferred from Texas is going to also leave. So this next class all of a sudden became probably the biggest class. It became save the rebuild class. I know I keep going on about it, but I just cannot believe the quarterback left. <laughs> like that is so bad. All right, so unfortunately for us, Daniel Bell is going to have to start. So unless we can get a 78 or above at quarterback this season, then he will have to be the quarterback for the final season. Everybody's still freshman red shirts. We still have plenty of time. And I guess on the plus side, we do have three out of three insta commit now. Going to make us a lot more versatile. If I can just crack the lead on somebody, I can potentially sign them. Now as a two star, we're still probably looking to get nothing but three star players, which it is what it is. The best one was 66 overall still not at the point where we're pulling any decent talent yet the good news is i've already found some quarterbacks alex garcia being the best one great speed great carrying great throw power great agility so not bad we're up to b minus now we're not going to be competitive by any stretch but you have an advantage that's for sure wait hold on a second how did we get okay so maybe the quarterback that we have is not very good i cannot find cornerbacks or safeties to save me life right now come on give me something i can work with here so if i filter my quarterback there's quite literally nobody i've got one guy on the board isaiah barber but he'll more than likely go down overall there's just nobody no quarterbacks no athletes i really need secondary and unfortunately for us there is no linebackers from the looks of things i did add everybody that looked somewhat decent or like they had potential i've got two corners but i feel like both of them are just gonna go down because they're so freaking slow i mean i've got guy crumb i'm gonna have to put him on the board 72 for kellen means all right anthony bray gonna go up to 78 this guy is like what looks to be a running back oh he's a corner nice let's get the cornerbacks out the way instantly okay well sap gonna insta commit too that's a cornerback guy crumb <laughs> i don't know why but i really want guy crumb oh yeah isaiah barber went down to a 67 so definitely not gonna pursue him we're gonna have to put our faith in david bell i think his name was or something like that i used to work for a guy called david bell he was a nice guy, to be fair. A pretty crappy class, fellas. <laughs> this is the worst low lock cheese class I have ever stumbled across in any rebuild I've ever done. So you just got to cop it on the chin. Right before I sat down and started recording, I was going to start with an 80 overall quarterback. And the video idea was going to be, can the best quarterback save the worst team? But instead I was like, no, let's just do a traditional rebuild and see if we can't just get New Mexico to be a good team. And how I look back at that and say, dude, just do the freaking quarterback we went from 2 and 10 to 10 and 3 back down to 1 and 11 2600 what do you mean 2600 we were a pass heavy team 16 touchdowns 21 picks you're 73 overall he has great receivers a great o-line and somehow managed to throw more picks than touchdowns players leaving i thought it was just going to be the quarterback again like oh yeah this scheme isn't really working out for me no the problem is you're throwing too many picks the scheme is fine you're just shit I'll go all in on Anthony Jenkins just because he's a cornerback. Okay, so again, that was a top 25 class. I do not know how. That was 24th on the dot. We got zero five stars and four four stars. Again, I just don't know how that's top 25 material right there. I think if I was with any other team in the nation, I could have gotten number one. I, I believe in Daniel Bell, believe it or not. It, despite the crappy awareness and everything in between, he has decent throw power and accuracy. That's the thing. He's not a bad quarterback. I don't really know what happened to our running backs. Like, I'm pretty sure we had some 80 overalls there. Maybe I was thinking of receiver. I don't know. But receiver is so unbelievably stacked. It's unreal. Quarterback is up to a 78, 59 awareness. Accuracy goes up to 80, throw powers and 85. So again, the throwing stats are fine. Brand new OC in his level one. Didn't I just say that we really need to have a good OC? Maybe they got fired. I don't know if they necessarily left. They might have just got fired. We've done the best we could. We unfortunately hit a lot of roadblocks along the way. But for the most part, we managed to pull it off. So we still have plenty of progression. I'm tripping. We have this season, then June. So we have two more progression seasons to go. B, B minus and B plus. So our 
Defense went from B minus to B plus, and our offense went from C, I think, to B minus. The 86 is not bad. It's a four and eight. Uh, not what we were really looking for. At least the coordinators went up a whole bunch. If we can turn four and eight to eight and four, and then to 12 and eight, that's the game plan, fellas. So we allowed 48 sacks, which is a, a big problem here. We scored 21 points a game, which isn't great. It's definitely better than what we have been doing. We're nearly rushing it for as many yards as we're passing it, which is a problem because we're heavily favoring the pass. So I would be expecting that we would be throwing three times the amount of rush yards that we have. I think that that will genuinely change next season with everybody getting better. Again, it's just graduation. Not a whole lot at that either. There's no way. I just refuse to believe that this final year, so not the upcoming year, but the year after, that we are going to be bad. It's quite literally impossible for us to be bad. Daniel Bell up to an 83. So his final year, he's going to be around a minimum of 87. So Kenny Edwards, this was the number one ranked guy in the first season. As a junior, he's 94. So he should be a 99 that final year. We got a 90 overall, so that'll be 95. We're going to have a bunch of mid to high 90s. That's what I'm talking about. A minus B plus and A minus. And this is with one progression season to go. The real question on everybody's mind is, can we upset Hawaii A&M? We got a win. It was close, but we got the dub. So remember that our goal for this season was eight and four. That's what I'm at least hoping for. Again, seven and five. Okay, it could be a lot worse. There we go. Bell's breaking records. So we got passing touchdowns for a career, surprisingly enough. He must have done a lot better this season. 37 touchdowns, 19 picks. So that is a lot better than what we were doing. James, right? That, yeah, Temple. He had 2,000 yards, 26 touchdowns, and eight picks. So he's doing really well. He's up to a 92, which means he'd be around a 97 by the final year. We could have really used that. So it seems like the entire team knows what's going on. The entire team wants to come back for that final season. Let's see what we're going to look like this final season. The best player on the team. In fact, the two best players other than the punter are both wide receivers. Quarterback's going to go to an 88. So he's got 75 awareness, which is really, really solid. 87 throw power, 85 throw accuracy. Running backs are good, really good. So we could even probably run it a bit more than we want two wide receivers five of them are 90 plus and again this is without the coordinator boost this is just their base rating left ends a 95 right end is a 94 dt is a 94 outside linebacker is definitely going to be our weakest part but we do have some 80s there cornerback we at least have one shutdown corner in andre love our quarterback is the All Mountain West quarterback, though. Center, right tackle, the same story. Left end, surprise, the right end is not ours. Hunter and returner. Let's have a look at our conference, though. Let's see what the word is. So Boise's 83. We're 93, 99, 90. So our offense is very overpowered. That's because of the receivers. It looks like the Mountain West isn't very good. The West looks a lot stronger. So we have two 84s and 80, two 81s as well. Not bad. Okay, but still... So I am expecting us to go undefeated. Out of conference shouldn't be too hard. We have Akron, UTEP. We got FCS in there as well. And then all of our conference games. So the conference games are going to be harder and they should still be wins. 90 defense, by the way. 99 offense, by the way. Another loss in our first conference game with all these 99 receivers, etc., etc. What is going on? I actually have no idea. Even 88 have some cognitive ability and should be able to get it done. Oh, all of a sudden it's a big win, 38-18. So without a doubt, the issue was me having too much faith in this quarterback. No, no, I, um, I tell a lie. That Boise State game must have been a fluke. All right, so let me know down in the comment section if you think that James Wright being our quarterback and him not leaving would have made the difference. I always like to finish on a bowl game and play said bowl game, but unfortunately for us, we're going to go six and six. It's because we had an FCS game in there and that's, you know, that would be the difference. The only thing we can do is check out the school records, passing stats, things like that. So Bell broke a record. Montez broke two records on the receiving end. Y song he broke three receiving records which is really good daniel bell as an 89 had 36 and a half hundred yards 34 touchdowns 18 picks so he didn't play that bad to be fair 135.8 passer rating would have liked him to be a bit more efficient a lot more efficient actually but 3600 so that's going to be top 10 in the nation on the rushing end seven and a half average so sam spicer allowing him to rush the ball a bit more, I think would have been a very big difference. Daniel Bell ran 173 times. So 
Obviously, he was looking to pass it and there was just nobody open, so he would scramble a lot. On the receiving end, this to me is the biggest disappointment right here. You would think with all of these 90s right here, that we would have done significantly better. We had one receiver over a thousand yards. We did have a lot of touchdowns. I will not take that away from the squad. How much we were passing it with this stacked wide receiver room, you would think that there would at least be two over a thousand and maybe one over like 1200. Kenny Edwards was 97 overall and had 815 yards, which is still Still very good but it's not ncaa 14 numbers it's not perim crow rebuild numbers and defensively i mean the defense did their thing rosario was a 95 he put up nine and a half sacks the last thing i want to do is see where our players get drafted if they get drafted at all so james wright as a 96 had 1900 yards 14 touchdowns six picks so he barely threw the ball rosario is projected round one so is kenny edwards so we had two first rounders we had two second rounders left tackle and right end riggs is going in the third round andre love in the fourth two more wide receivers in the fifth our punter goes in the seventh round you know it's crazy our quarterback is just graduating but yes fellas unfortunately that is going to end the rebuild there if you made it this far into the rebuild though, you are the real MVP. I hope the rest of your day is awesome. And from me personally, I'm out. Peace. Sometimes I'm winning, can I breathe right underwater?